folks, we're going to get started. We have a really jam-packed agenda today, so I'm going to try and keep us on time. It never works out that way for community events. Um, but uh, welcome to the third um, London OpenShift Commons gathering, uh, the second time we've been here at the beautiful Savoy um, IET uh, with this very posh um, atmosphere. It feels um, for an open source community gathering, it's pretty um, upscale, I must say. And uh, so I'm, I'm really grateful that you've all chosen to join us here today and spend a day with us hearing about all the things that are going on across the OpenShift ecosystem. So um, come in, grab a seat, and I can see a few other people wandering, so there. So um, uh, my name is Diane Mueller. I am um, eternally grateful to all of the sponsors who are here today. Um, this is unlike other um, Red Hat events. It's a community event, so everything is sponsor um, driven, and we couldn't do it without folks like Aquasec, Sixdig, um, and Prolifix and Storage. OS, Accenture, Portworks, SNICS, Crunchy Data, UK Cloud, IBM Z or Z, depending on where you're from, and Couchbase. Um, so please, um, during the breaks, take a uh, wander around, have a cup of coffee, chat with them. Um, we are incredibly grateful for the work they do within the ecosystem. A lot of them have built operators, which you're going to hear about today. A lot of them have open source versions of their products. Um, it's a wonderful, very big and robust ecosystem, and um, these guys are one of the, some of our main supporters, so we're very, very grateful for that. As I said, we have a really packed agenda. I never build in time, really, for transitions between talks, so I'm going to get all of my speakers, um, if you come in late, to come over and sit down here, and we'll just grab you and, and throw you on stage, um, and hopefully you're mic'd up. Um, appropriately. Um, so that's going to be a, a, a nice long pack day. We promise coffee breaks and food up again where you registered on the, the third floor. So um, don't rush the elevators, but um, there will be food and plenty of time to network today. So I, I like to start off all of the Commons gatherings with really um, trying to help people understand what OpenShift Commons is all about. And I, I've done this talk a few times about, as I call it, the search for connections across the OpenShift ecosystem. And often, when you're working with um, a vendor or an open source project, you're doing it remotely or you're doing it in your cubicle, and you're working with lots of people who um, they, you, you never see their faces. So a few people here I've seen for the first time. Uh, Wayne there, who uh, I just met for the first time, has the same name as the mayor in my town. And um, now, I, now I've actually met him and I know in LinkedIn he's not my mayor. Um, so there's lots of great ways um, to connect. And I think really having these smaller gatherings, um, you know, with 300 or so people, where you can spend some time on the coffee breaks, really meeting and connecting with people is probably the most um, um, wonderful thing you can do in order to move forward your adventure with OpenShift and delivering your infrastructure. So today is really about facial recognition. I know you didn't come to an ML or an AI event, but my goal for all of you today is um, to meet people you don't already know. So I'm going to ask you all to make sure that maybe you move around your chairs during the break, introduce yourself to someone else who's not from your company, um, because we had over 180 different companies, not including Red Hat and IBM now, um, people. So there are a lot of a good mix of people from every kind of um, uh, part of the market sectors, from banking to edge to telcos to all kinds of fun folks. And we had 500 individuals register for today. So I know it was a free event, so there's a little attrition. But you know, you'll all come and at least eat my food and hang out and really try and um, take advantage of what the commons is, because it's really kind of a new community model. If you work in open source for as long as I have, um, originally it was really about trying to get people to contribute to my project, whether it was etcd or OpenShift Origin, when it was called three or four years ago. And now it's become much more of an interconnected world, where when you see the CNCF and, other, and all the projects that are upstream and downstream to OpenShift, it's much more difficult to really get a sense of all of the intricacies of those communications. So what we've tried to do is create a new com community model, which is much more peer-to-peer -peer, um, network, networking and interactions. And we have 
events like today. We have OpenShift Commons briefings. We have a very long catalog of YouTube um, videos where you get to see me um, introducing people and getting you guys uh, to talk about your talk, you know, whatever's near and dear to your heart. So if you want to speak, we have plenty of podiums. We have SIGs on just about every topic, a uh, number of working groups that we host under the OpenShift Commons. We have a really active Slack channel. Um, which is active, sometimes good, sometimes bad, because it's like two in the morning and someone from Japan is tapping me on the shoulder. There's some mailing lists. And yes, we do look for you to contribute code, but we'll talk a little bit about that, where the code contribution can come from. But really, my goal for community development is about helping create connected communities, whether it's the OpenShift OKD one, or it is etcd, or it's operators, or it's Quay, or it's Kubernetes, or any of the CNCF projects, or any of the sponsors who have operators and things like Falco and other projects. So just trying to keep all of those um, projects across that so that we can sync up our release schedules, feature requests, and, you know, People know each other. So that's really the, the goal of Commons. It's really about creating those connections. Um, I've done a little bit of uh, research on GitHub contributions, and you'll see these. And whenever I talk, you can Google it. And I do a lot of, I call these the jellyfish diagrams. Each one of these dots represents a person who's made some contribution or pull request or issue logged in GitHub or in one of our bugzillas for the projects. So you can see Kubernetes up there, and you can see OpenShift, and it's just some of them. If I um, picked all of the new um, CNCF projects and all of the projects, it would be a big blur of that. But it's the way you can start to see people who are contributing to some, come on in. Don't be afraid. There's a whole front row here. I'm sure Londoners don't sit in front rows because you, the you go to the theater too much, and too many volunteers are pulled on stage. Um, so it's really today is just about trying to help all of you create a lot of connections because um, really the way that I measure the health of our communities is about the, the number of connections that we create and how interconnected it is with the upstream, the downstreams, and all the vendors. Um, because at the heart of everything is open source, the open communities, and trying to make all of the collaboration that we do come out in the open. So um, that is what makes um, innovation in the open source world work. So um, as I said, open source is the source of everything. There's millions of projects out there in GitHub. Um, there's lots of them. I, there's no way I could put them all up here because again, it would be a blur. But we have to really recognize the interconnectedness and interdependencies. So I like to say, um, if you don't know, the, um, the name of the open source um, repo and the open source project for um, OpenShift is OKD. And I jokingly say that means OK, Diane. Um, but it is a function of Kubernetes plus everything else. So it really, and you'll see the panda pop up a little bit. And, and OKD is really an interesting, um, in the, it's in an interesting spot right now, and you'll hear a talk um, hopefully this um, mid-morning um, from Christian Glombeck on where we are at with releasing OKD4. But it's a collaboration with the Fedora Core West community, Ignition, and a number of other projects as well to bring um, OpenShift onto the Fedora Core West so we'll have a, a pure open source play. Um, so there's lots of ways we um, collaborate. But the interesting thing is, is like for all the millions of projects and all the hundreds of them that I actually know about, there's tons of undiscovered ones. And I, I probably overdo the jellyfish um, metaphor too much, but it's, um, there's so many different things that pop up on our radar that it's very hard unless you have some um, network of peers and ways to get connect with people to really validate which ones are the ones that you should be watching, you should be incorporating. And this is really what Common strives to do because um, this is last night's late, late night snapshot of the CNCF snapshot, trying to make decisions about which ones of these projects you want to deploy in production or you want to start testing or you want to start contributing to is really hard if you don't have people to help you um, and give you advice and that you can trust to do that. And that's what we really try and do. So if you just look at a few of the things that are in the incubated or graduated stat, um, status um, of um, 
the, C, the Cloud Native C Computing Foundation right now, just that, figuring out which ones of these and how they interact with OpenShift and how you should use them is really you know, a, a difficult process. Um, and then you drop in the operator framework, which is Operator Hub and a whole bunch of other things. You're talking about another 104 operators plus um, a lot of them out, still out in the wild getting added into them. So what we keep trying to do within the OpenShift ecosystem is build strategies so that you can figure out um, how to vet and validate and use and find and discover some of these new projects. Um, so with the operator hub.io is the open source side of things. There's another one that's built in and baked in, and you'll hear about that today quite a bit. There's going to be a, a, a nice talk on operators and some demos. We have the author of the recently published Kubernetes operators book, Jay Adobe, one of my colleagues, is here. Did you get the published books? Do they show up? Uh, you're going to ask me that at the coffee break. I think we had a bunch of, of the books. His, they just came out this week for him to sign. Yeah, and we haven't seen a hard copy of it yet, so that's coming. So the, the thing about Jellyfish is really sometimes you have to really dive into some of these projects. So we look at um, make, trying to figure out the interconnectedness of, of this. And some of the research I've done um, has really been how I, as the the head of community development and the person who tries to find some of these people. So these three little dots at the top are three little, um, not three, but three um, folks who have been contributing to both of these projects and some of them are, so these folks, um, some of these folks will be here today talking to you um, and some of these folks um, will be online. Greg Swift is a great example of this. Um, he's been contributing a bit to Jaeger, a bit to, to Kubernetes and OpenShift and he was working at Rackspace and is now at LogDNA. And if you go on our Slack channel, he's like a massively always there presence. Um, and so what I'm hoping today you'll do is you'll find some of those people, whether um, they're Red Hatters, where we overlap with IBM folks, or there are other people, um, maybe from Amadeus or Santana or Barclays or Deutsche Bank, some of the people you're going to hear talking about this stuff today. Um, they're here in the room, they're here to connect with you, they're here to share their stories and their best practices. Um, you can ask them questions. If they're here and on stage, they're totally willing to talk to you um, and connect with you. So take advantage of that. Um, and so you guys are the audience and you're maybe looking in and kind of looking at these strange jellyfish who are gonna come on the stage. But I promise you they don't sting and uh, they won't entrap you. I might entrap you and try and get you to come and share your story at the next London event or one of the any, any of the upcoming ones. We'll be in Amsterdam at KubeCon with another gathering. We'll be um, in, at Red Hat Summit in San Francisco, any of those events. If you wanna share your story or if you have an open source project that's part of this ecosystem that you, know, you wanna talk about, please come find me on the break. I am happy to stop talking and to give away the podium today and any day. So um, try, I'm doing pretty good keeping us on time here. Um, so I'm gonna try and um, make sure that each of the speakers is available during the breaks. Everyone's committed to staying here who's speaking the whole day. So you can track them down and there's a reception in, in the evening, um, so it, which is upstairs again in the third floor. And I, I've seen the skyline from that room upstairs. It is gorgeous here at night. So come be jellyfish with us. Um, if you'd like to join the commons, there are, I think, 540 organizations, it's a member-based organi um, organization um, community. So you only have to join once and any, anybody um, at your company can join. So just sign, sign the paper, sign away, and um, we'll get you in to the Slack channel, onto the mailing lists. We'll make you volunteer for SIGs and tell your story and we'll get you connected to the people and the projects and the engineers and the other contributors across the ecosystem. Um, and help you on your journey um, through the OpenShift world. Again, one more shout out to all of our sponsors who are, most of them are probably upstairs, probably frantically still trying to get their booth together. Um, please do um, spend some time with them. They really, we couldn't do this without them. So I'm gonna thank you for your time. <laughs>